The fact is, more than three million couples in the United States struggle with infertility, and for more than half of these, in vitro fertilization offers the only real solution. The fact is, less than 10% of couples in need of IVF actually undergo this treatment. And the fact is, most insurance companies do not cover IVF, primarily because of the low success rates and the costs associated with multiple births and premature babies. What if these facts could be changed? In a heartbeat. Doctors Jeffrey Scher and Levent Keskentepi of the Scher Institutes for Reproductive Medicine and Reprocure recently reported on research that has yielded a remarkable 74% ongoing pregnancy rate for in vitro fertilization. That's more than twice the current national average. We put one or two embryos in and 28 of the 35 women conceived. That's about 80% of them. 26 women all gave birth to babies. And this is a remarkable result when you consider that the national average IVF birth rate for young women is no more than a third, one in three, 33%. Furthermore, these results were achieved without a single case of high order multiples, that is triplets or greater. Their findings are being heralded as a major breakthrough that in the years to come could profoundly impact the entire field of reproductive medicine. Dr. Scher, co-founder and executive medical director of the Scher Institutes for Reproductive Medicine, is a pioneer in the field and has been responsible for many important breakthroughs over the past 25 years. Dr. Keskin Tepe, Executive Laboratory Director for the Scher Institutes and Reprocure, holds a PhD in reproductive biology and has been an integral part of significant developments in the field of embryology. The method utilized in this study involved the testing of human eggs and embryos for their competency, that is, their ability to produce a healthy baby upon being transferred to a receptive uterus. This research, published in the prestigious medical journal Fertility and Sterility, describes an innovative process involving a method known as Comparative Genomic Hybridization, or CGH, which assesses each and every chromosome in the human egg. So here, we were able to get more than double the likelihood of a pregnancy of a birth by selectively putting back an embryo deemed to be competent because its egg of origin was found to be competent based upon CGH performed on the DNA from its own polar body. By identifying the chromosomally competent eggs and fertilizing them with healthy sperm, the researchers found that the resulting embryos were chromosomally normal 90% of the time. The transfer of just one or two competent embryos at a time resulted in the birth of a healthy baby in more than 70% of the study cases. This study also revealed that the majority of human eggs and embryos are chromosomally defective and that this incidence increases dramatically as the woman's age progresses beyond 35 years. Such eggs and embryos are incapable of producing healthy babies. What makes matters worse is the fact that current microscopic and genetic techniques aimed at identifying competent embryos are highly unreliable, prompting many IVF specialists to transfer multiple embryos at a time in the hope that at least one will result in a baby. Such practice has led to a virtual explosion in the incidence of high order multiple births. If corroborated by further independent studies, which are currently underway in the United States and in the UK, this breakthrough could literally double IVF birth rates while minimizing the incidence of miscarriages, high order multiple pregnancies, and chromosomal birth defects such as Down syndrome. Doctors Scher and Keskentepi have expanded their research and are currently engaged in trials in the United States and abroad which will assess the value of performing CGH on embryos rather than on eggs. They are also engaged in a study where CGH is used to selectively freeze competent human eggs. Initial results strongly suggest that this approach could markedly improve the viability of frozen eggs and open the door to improved human egg banking, thereby expanding reproductive choices for women.
by providing a reliable method of identifying chromosomally normal embryos, this research could also yield a unique opportunity to generate pure embryonic stem cell lines. This could represent a much needed shot in the arm for human embryonic stem cell research and development. But its potential to impact the entire field of medicine and enhance the human condition through research and development, through producing embryonic stem cells, through being able to test new drugs, these are the exciting things of the future, the real brave new world.